Hi lovelies and welcome to another episode of the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Simple Knit Co. And here on YouTube where I hang out and share with you all the things that I'm currently knitting. And I hope you're all keeping safe and well. If this is your first time checking out the podcast, thank you so much and welcome along. Um, it's lovely to meet you and make sure you say hi in the comments below and a big hello and welcome back to all my returning viewers. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you and talk about knitting in a very specific and excited way, um, which I think is why we all watch knitting podcasts, right? Because our real life non-knitting friends can only listen to us talk about De shoulder decreases for about 30 seconds before they completely glaze over. But I know that you guys want to hear that, so that's what we're here for. Um, grab your knitting, grab a drink. I did have a cup of coffee that I was going to share with you earlier, um, but as soon as I sat down to start recording, um, the children next door decided that they would practice their trumpets on the veranda, um, which, you know, all for music education, but I don't think lying in a hammock is the best way to really perfect your technique as a former brass player myself. Um, and, you know, I can also understand why their parents don't want them making those noises inside the house, but it was very inconsiderate. Um, but here we are. So instead, I'm drinking some water out of my current favorite china. Um, I found these amazing Duck Dynasty <laughs> tumblers at a local op shop, secondhand shop. Um, I have no idea how these tumblers from an American reality show ended up in a Vinnie's on the south side of Brisbane, uh, but they did. And that Vinnie's is normally really terrible. Um, I don't find anything there except once a cockroach did leap out of a scarf onto my person, um, which is pretty feral. Uh, but I did find these cups, so they're forgiven. And everyone, I like bring them out as soon as someone comes over, I'm like, oh, would you like to drink out of a Duck Dynasty cup? And the answer is usually, what is that? And no. So if you're a reality fan, um, you can appreciate my silverware. Crystalware, I should say. Sorry, yes, this episode might be a little bit choppy because whichever way the wind's blowing, the planes are flying directly over my house and it sounds like they're going to land on the roof. So I will try to keep this as smooth as possible but yes pour a drink pull out your knitting um and let's get started i'll talk first about what i'm wearing so as i said i don't know if i said but it's weird weather at the moment it's supposed to be spring it's very wet um not as wet as it is in new south wales um but it's wet it's kind of humid but not hot um not the best weather ever, but I am wearing um, my Lorelei vest, which is a pattern by my friend Bronte Swanick, um, which I will link down below. And she's also just recently started a YouTube channel where she talks about knitting and books and her planners and things. So I'll link that down below as well because she's adorable. Um, but I have, yes, this is the Lorelei vest and I knit this in... Um, it's a bulky weight vest pattern and I held together two Bendigo Woolen Mills luxury bases, luxury yarns. So it was the eight ply in black and the four ply in white to make this mild effect. And I really, really love just a little cropped vest. So easy to wear, so cute. Um, I'm just wearing it over a black linen dress that I did not iron. Um, so yeah, it is kind because it's like not warm, but it's not cold. I did try to put a light jumper on, but that was too hot. So I feel like this is kind of the best way to regulate my body temperature as well as I can today. Um, so let's talk about some knitting. Um, first of all, I do have one finished object, which is a gift knit. So um, yes, you can hold your applause. Um, throw bouquets at my feet because I actually knit something for someone else. It's this pair of socks that I have to hold this way because they've got like a design detail, but there are two, but I'll just hold one. So this is the Socks on a Plain pattern by Laura Linneman of The Knit Girls. And it's a free sock pattern and it's just a vanilla sock with this cute little cable detail that runs down the outside of the foot. So I 
kind of, I modified this pattern, I think. No, I did. I modified it quite heavily. So the pattern that Laura has written is a toe up sock pattern. So I just did it cuff down because I prefer to knit my socks cuff down. Um, I did 20 rows of two by two rib, um, which flowed really nicely into the cable. And then I did a heel flap and gusset and just like, I don't know what kind of toe, just like a normal toe um, where you do like decreases every other row. Um, but yeah, so that's what I did for these socks. And the other little detail I added, so in the pattern that Laura, the, it's a free pattern, as I said a thousand times already, um, there's just one cable chart. So it's the same, whichever way it is, a left leaning or right leaning cable, it's the same on both socks. What I did was I inverted it. So I did a left leaning cable on one sock and a right leaning cable on the other. So they kind of are a mirror image of each other. Um, I don't know if anyone else would notice that. Um, I think my auntie might notice who I've made these for, um, but I'm not 100% sure. And to be honest, I don't really care. It just made me happy. So <laughs> that is this pair of gift knit socks. And the yarn is a really, really pretty base. I'll show you on the stockinette side so you can see how nice it is. So this is um, from Three Mums Yarn, who are an Australian yarn dyeing business that I will link down below. I actually won this yarn many years ago. I'm sorry, I'm seeing so many of my own hairs just like hanging off of these socks. So apologies. Um, I won this yarn many years ago in the Kanga Kiwi Knit Along and it is so pretty. The colorway is called Rain Dance. And I think it was a collaboration that they'd done with like a shawl designer. Um, and it was designed like dyed in collaboration with a pattern release, but I've just used it for these socks. It's really, really pretty like watercolory dye work with these like darker speckles that I think is just so, so lovely. It's knit up so nice. And like any pooling that there is, is like really, really pretty rather than like janky um yeah no it was a really really lovely yarn to work with as well so i will link their yarn shop down below while i gesture with sock blockers but yeah this is the socks on a plane so now i'm going to make another pair of these for my uncle because i feel a little bit bad giving my auntie a pair of socks and not my uncle so yeah i will have done two gift knits before the end of the year um which is very generous of me so yeah those that's my only finished object for this episode now i have two whips that are like 80 percent done i thought maybe i would be able to get them done before i recorded but i can't be bothered um and they're both at a stage that's going to be a little bit tricky to show you but we'll persevere so the first one oh, let me go this way Oh yeah, you can kind of see. So this is the Parsley Top by Claire Mountain Manapon. I had started this where the little sharky is down the bottom. I think that's where I was up to when I last showed this on the podcast. I'd just done the little hem. So I'm almost done. All I have to do is I'm, I've done the finish the front body like that. I just have to finish off the back body which I just have to knit straight for a little bit and then do the decreases. And then I just have to pick up and put on a ribbed neckline and then I am done. So I'm having so much fun knitting this pattern. It is so, so lovely. So um, I'm knitting this on the recommended needle size, so a four millimeter needle, and I'm knitting the third size in the pattern. Um, the yarn that I'm using is so lovely. I still have one skein that I haven't wound up yet. So it is the Field of Dreams yarn, um, which is a collaboration between the Pearl Box and Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill. So it's, a, I believe, like a yarn spun at Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill and then dyed by the ladies at the Pearl Box. Um, it is 50% Polworth, 30% linen, and 20% Surrey. So it is so, so nice to knit with. It is like structured, but like drapey, but still like feels really soft. Um, it's just, I'm really enjoying working with it. And this colorway is called Woodland. It's this beautiful dark 
foresty green. Um, yeah, it's so lovely and it's knitting up so nice. You can see it. Oh, and that's what it looks like in the stockinette. And the cool detail on this top is along the sides, it has this um, like traveling twisted stitch faux cable, which is so much fun to work. It's so, once you've kind of done one repeat, it's really easy to read your knitting and work out where you're up to and what you need to do. Um, and it looks really effective. I love the kind of, it looks like a cable, but it also looks like, flattened it's almost like a 2d cable instead of a, like the puffiness of a regular cable I really really like it I think it looks really pretty also I love this little eyelet detail above the hem I think that's really nice and the other detail in this pattern that I love is that as you do the armhole shaping you like do this like edge like knitted like you do the edge so you don't have to pick up you don't have to pick up and do any like cuff thing around the arm the arms are kind of really nicely finished like as you go so you only have to when you're done and you've grafted the front and back together all you have to pick up is the neckband which is such a lovely detail and I think just makes it such because it is a bottom-up project and there's something when you're knitting bottom up and then have to pick up the neckband and the armbands it is a little bit just like fiddly at the end but you're working this finishing as you go so it's just one less thing to do and because it's just a tank top like you'd probably just like pick up and cast off anyway like you don't need much of a finish so that's a really thoughtful detail from Claire to make this just a real joy, just an absolute joy to knit. Um, there were a couple of points where I made boo-boos as I went along and that's just because I can't read. Um, and I it, like felt wrong as I was doing it, but I just kept going and then had to knit back. And both of them, it was because in the pattern, it says like slip a certain number of stitches so it's like s and both of them were teen numbers i think one was like 16 and one was 15. but both of them it was just like sl then one five or one six and both of both times i read it just as slip six or slip five i clearly wasn't reading the pattern properly i don't know whether to blame working on my phone rather than printing out the pattern um or if it's the font that's used in the pattern look i'll find anyone to blame except myself for not reading um but i just love that i was like oh, this is everyone else's fault rather than my fault for just not reading um but that's literally the only issue i've had issue i've had with the pattern so just like read um great advice but yeah no it's been an absolute dream to work on because it's mostly stockinette it's really like soothing and fun but you have the little repeats up the side to keep you occupied um yeah i don't know what else to say but i'm really loving this i can't wait to have it finished um, because it's not super hot, I'll still get heaps of wear out of this by the time um, I've finished working on it. So that is very exciting. So yes, I really, I don't have very much to go at all. I'll probably finish it within the next week or two, which is very exciting. And yeah, I can't wait. Good pattern, good yarn. Nothing else to say, really. That is the parsley top. So while I just clang my needles everywhere... Let me put her away and get my other work in progress that's also going to be a bit of a nightmare to show. So this is the cloud bow dress that was in issue 40 of Pom Pom Magazine. And I've just, there's just like a little pile of crumbs on this project. Let me try and clean that off before I show you. Um, so this is a pattern by Reed Keys. It's a mohair either top or dress pattern. There's heaps of options. There's been so many pretty versions coming up on the gram um, that people have done with really light colored yarns with this in the um, pattern, it has stripes. Um, it's just a really, really pretty pattern. And I decided I wanted to do it in black after seeing Reed herself knitting, knit a black one. Um, I'm not using mo, I'm using uh, FOMO yarn from 
Spotlight, which is a acrylic mohair substitute blend that is incredibly affordable. So um, even though it takes like a lot of yarn, it was a very, very cheap project because I'm not sure how much wear I'm going to get out of this, but I'm having so much fun making it. So it'll be like a midi like mid calf length dress um so it started top down you're not going to be able to see very much because it's black so let's see how we go so i've done the top um it does have you pick up the sleeves um before because the sleeve stitches kind of blend into the body stitches so, so the construction is you knit the front and back panels and then you pick up the sleeves and then you pick up the body and start knitting. So I decided right at the start, I'd pick up the neck and just finish that. So the only, I think I'm knitting the fourth size and I think I'm knitting on the recommended needle size. Um, this is like a six and a half, I believe. Yeah, six and a half millimeter needle. Um, so what I did um, yeah, I picked up the neck and finished it right at the start so I wouldn't have to go back and do it later. And also I'd kind of, as I was going, get an idea of how it would actually look. Um, the only modification I made to the pattern. So in the pattern, it has you around the, um, sleeve and around the neck. I think it's like you just do like stockinette and then fold over and sew it down. The idea of doing, of like sewing down a neckline in lace weight at a quite a loose gauge uh, was not appealing to me at all so what i did around the sleeves um i actually combined the lace weight yarn with some black cotton linen blend yarn and some um, leftover lindy chain from knit picks that i had from an old project um so i held the two together and i did like about four or five rows just in the stockinette and then I did an I-cord bind off um, just so that the arms it will kind of be uh, not tight on my arm but just kind of hold the structure so you get that effect so they'll just like sit on my arm so I think that'll be really cute and then around the neckline I did the same thing I held the um, cotton linen yarn together with the mohair and I just did a one by one rib for maybe maybe five rounds maybe not even um just about two centimeters of one by one rib and then just did a super stretchy bind off um so I think that'll be really cute um it'll just because it's black I mean you can't really see as well like I feel like no matter what finishing I did it's not like immediately obvious what it looks like so i just did whatever was easiest at the time and this is how long it is oh let's go this way so i'm almost to the point where i will do the um so in the pattern there's two options for like how much volume you want in the peplum and then at the bottom so i did the full peplum increases around the um waist so it's kind of like a baby doll um waistline and then i've just been going 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 down on the body and stockinette and then i'll do there's like a ruffle around the bottom um, i have another ready, ready to wear dress that has a similar skirt shape um that i really like the length of so i'm just measuring this against that dress um to get the to get the length that I want. Um, and this is seriously, I didn't think I would enjoy working on this project as much as I am enjoying working on it. It was more kind of for something so big with so much knitting involved, it was more of, I just wanted the product rather than thinking I would actually enjoy the process, but I've actually found just, it's just stocking it in the round. So it's just basically like doing a giant sock. Um, it's just such a fun project to work on while you're watching TV because it's just stockinette. I can still work on the black yarn even at nighttime um, when it's quite dark. I did at the beginning have a few instances of some dropped stitches that I had to work back up because it is worked at such a loose gauge. Um, but I've kind of, over the zillions of stitches that I've done, I've managed to kind of work out 
my gauge and holding my yarn and managing everything so I don't drop any stitches. So I haven't dropped one for a while. Um, but yeah, it's just a really fun project to work on because it's one I'm not particularly worried about my technique. Like my gauge isn't perfectly even because it's at such a loose gauge, like a, and it's such a like loose and open fabric. Like it's not like the neatest knitting I've ever done. It's not the most even thing I've ever made, but it's just like, it's just really fun, low stakes knitting, which I have really enjoyed. You know, when you've had a big day or whatever, and you just want to have something in your hands that you don't really have to worry about. This is what I have been working on. And I've never really under like the, I can imagine now making more dresses, which I never thought I would be a knitted dress making kind of person just because it is so much, so much knitting. Um, but just having a project with no deadline, you can just pick it up, put it down. You don't need to think about it. Um, I guess I kind of now understand why people enjoy blanket knitting, which I've never appealed to me. I've made one little knee rug earlier this year and um it's a motorbike um and have no desire to like it didn't ignite anything in me that i ever want to really make a blanket again but working on this like i can imagine myself making more knit dresses because it was just it's just so fun and it's yeah that kind of low stakes stocking it in the round i don't have a time like maybe if i could finish it by halloween that would be cool but i don't need to and just yeah and then you have like a really cool thing to wear available at the end so yeah never thought i would be a dress knitter but this has been an absolute joy as i said low stakes i'm not on a time limit and but i am really really close to being finished so i think i measured yesterday and i had probably five to seven centimeters to go before it gets to the point where I want to do the um, ruffle. And then I think I'm going to do the ruffle about 15 to 20 centimeters from eyeballing it on the dress that I'm measuring against. So yeah, not, not too much longer and it'll be done. But as I said, I've just been picking this up, particularly the last couple of weeks, probably the project I've worked on the most, just because it's been very soothing very just yeah very soothing very calming just something really really fun to work on so never thought i would be a dress knitter but here we are maybe that's maybe that's my thing now um so many cars um you know that i mean my i have the attention span of a fly so i'm don't think dresses are going to become my thing, but I'm having a lot of fun working on that one. So that's everything that I have been knitting on. But the other reason I've been enjoying just working on stockinette in the round is it means that I've also been able to simultaneously knit and daydream about what I cast on next. So um, I thought I would share with you because I didn't have a whole lot of like product content to share with you today. Um, I thought I would kind of go over what my next cast ons are going to be. So these are the projects that I already have the yarn for and like I could cast on right now if I wanted to. Um, so yeah, let's jump on in. Which will I do first? Let's do this one. Cause I probably, this will probably be, I think, the next project that I work on. So I've got it written down. So this would be the Demoiselle Top by Kristen Jones that was in an old issue of Ami Risu magazine. I did get the magazine out a couple of days ago and it is, I think, buried under a pile of clean laundry. Um, so I will just insert a picture, but I have bought the, um, actually like probably nearly 12 months ago, like the end of last year, I bought the same yarn that the top is made in because I think it looks really pretty in the um, in the red. So this is Shiny Happy Cotton from Wool and the Gang in Lipstick Red. It's a really beautiful, like, um, coolish toned red, kind of like a slightly lighter than Ruby Woo, but that kind of vibe if you're a makeup person. Um, that more cool toned red. Um, 
And yeah, I, it's just an all over lace top, I think would be really easy to wear. I think in the red color, it could be fun um, to wear like for Christmas, but also just looks great, really fresh, summery color. Um, and I just loved it in that red color. So I have the yarn ready to go. And that I think is going to be the next project that I cast on because I really, really want to make that top. I've wanted to make it, I think that's like a 2017 issue of Amirisu. Um, so I've wanted, been wanting to cast on that jumper since probably 2017. Um, so jumper, it's a top, it's just a top. Um, but yeah, I love love this red color. I think it'll be really fun. It looks quite quick. Um, it's like short sleeves, um, but really pretty. And yes, can't wait to cast that on. I also have some other Wool in the Gang yarn that I want to cast on. So I bought this to make like a striped top. I don't really know what was thinking what what I was thinking when I bought it. So it's just been sitting there like burning a hole in my stash um not really sure what to do with it so it's i think this base has been discontinued but it's the buddy hemp yarn from wool and the gang in ivory white which is just a really i thought would actually be a slightly more like being called ivory white i thought it'd be a slightly warmer off-white white but it is just a pure yeah it's a very just like cool it's white um, and then this color is eagle gray, which is a nice, like, darkish, it's a little bit less dark. It's coming up a little darker than it is on camera in real life. Um, so I decided, I think I was going to do like a striped top or something with these. I don't know what I was thinking. So I have two skeins of each, but I've decided what I'm going to do is make another Lorelei vest because this was such a fun pattern to work. It's so quick. Um, but do it color blocked. So I was going to do this way around with the gray on the top and the white on the bottom, but I actually think I prefer it. Yeah, I do. I definitely prefer it with the white on top and the gray on the bottom. Um, so this is a top down construction. So I'll just do the top, then pick up the armband and the collar in the white and just work either until I run out of the white or until it gets to like here and then I'll probably this is a little bit cropped I'll probably work it longer because I think I have enough yarn that I can get a bit of a longer body out of it so I will do that so it'll be more like a tank top but using this pattern and because this is like a I think it's a, it's advertised as like a DK and it's like a chainette construction um looking at it yeah that looks like it looks eight ply-ish maybe it's like a hefty DK um and this pattern's written for bulky weight. I'll probably go up maybe two sizes compared to what I made this one out of and then down a couple of needle sizes. So that is my plan with these ones. I think that'll be a really cute, just like color blocked tank top. And that gets this yarn out of my stash so I can stop thinking about it. Um, the one other yarn that I have for a summer top, I had bought to make something else a different top but i just wasn't feeling it so it's the knitting for olive pure silk yarn in the dark cognac colorway which is a really pretty once again it's coming out a little darker on screen than it is in real life but a really pretty warm mid-tone brown color um i'm really starting to lean into enjoying more like warm toned like browns there's not a lot of brown in my wardrobe but it's just a really nice neutral. I really like this color. So I bought it to make another, a different tank top. I'm not feeling that one. So I was having a look through projects that I'd faved. And as I was looking through the projects that I'd favorited on Ravelry, I saw the Aerial Top by Sari Nordland, which is a really pretty tank top um, with an all over lace pattern, quite wide straps, like big enough to wear a bra strap underneath straps. Really pretty. It's knit in DK, but I can hold this yarn double to get gauge and I have enough yardage to do that for that top because I, I have four skeins. Um, so that's like a thousand meters and holding it double, I think will give me a yeah really nice fabric. So I'm really looking forward to making that one as well, probably after the other two. 
sorry, there was so much traffic today, probably after the other two, but yeah, I just had this yarn and then I bought it for a project specifically and then kind of fell, it, fell out of love with making that project. So I just had this yarn and it's so lovely. Um, and I just didn't know what to do with it. So now that I have a, it tied to a project, I feel much, much calmer. I don't like having a stash of yarn. Like I like to very project specific purchaser. Um, so then when that project doesn't pan out, I just don't like it. Um, but I will say as well, I bought this from the Yarn Bowl, which is on the north side of Brisbane, which they stock the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. If you're looking for an Australian stockist to save yourself and the planet a little bit of shipping, I mean, it has to come anyway, so, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so those are the summer tops. And I do have one, um, like, gar like wintry garment worth of, of yarn. So this is the, my, beloved wonder fluff from knit picks which is i've talked about it before it's this amazing fluffy bulky weight yarn that's like a little nylon tube with alpaca and a little bit of merino blown into it and this is the mountain fern colorway it's a slightly darker version of the color on my chair but it's just this like perfect warm scummy mossy green um I just, I love this color so much. I'd originally bought this to make another Magnolia Bloom jumper, which I made that last year and I love it. I wear it so much. It's just like, it was so fast to make. I think I made it in 10 days, which I'm not a fast knitter and I wasn't like on a deadline trying to make that jumper, but I just, it just worked up so quickly and I love the fit, I love the fabric, I love everything about it. Um, but then I was looking in my Ravelry purchases and sometime in the murky distant past, I actually had bought the um, Camilla Vads Magnolia Chunky pattern, which is the same as her original Magnolia pullover. So it has, instead of having the lace motif around the, um, around the yoke that where the Magnolia Bloom has it, it has the a lace motif around the bottom of the garment and also around the sleeves. Um, now I didn't know, I don't remember buying that. I don't, but I did apparently because it's sitting in like that it is saved on my computer. So I bought it at some stage. Um, I would recommend if you're going to make one of the Magnolia patterns, I would recommend buying the Magnolia Bloom just because it is more size inclusive than the uh, Magnolia Chunky and the original Magnolia pattern, which I think is knit in sport weight. Um, I, th I don't know if she's expanded the size range because I know that now when I was looking through my Ravelry purchases, the Magnolia Chunky and like a t-shirt version, um, which is the Magnolia Chunky but with short sleeves, are combined kind of into the same pattern, I think, or like if you've bought one, you get both. Um, and I don't know if she expanded the sizes with that, but yeah, if you're going to buy one, I would recommend buying the Magnolia Bloom because it is more size inclusive. Um, but since I have it already, um, I was going to knit another Magnolia Bloom, but I figured I already own the pattern, so I may as well use, use that one. I mean, I'm not giving her any more money than I've already given her. Um, but yeah, I just, I love this color so much. It just makes me so happy. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, like pond scum, toxic waste, something like that. But I just, I absolutely love it. I think it's so gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I may actually cast this one on before anything else. But you all know that every summer at some, like in the height of humidity, I love to cast on a bulky weight pattern. So we'll save it for them. And I have seen that this colorway is still available on Knit Picks. So if you want to also look like you've recently been dug up from a filthy pond, we can be green twins. So that is kind of my upcoming knitting plans. That's the trailers for what's going to be coming up on this podcast over the next probably four months or so. Um, but yeah, there is one other thing I want to share with you. I don't know, as you know, I don't normally do acquisitions on the podcast, only really when they're project specific. 
but I recently got this yarn and I just was, I've been nerding out about this for like the last three days by myself. So I just need to talk to someone else about this. So um, I've worked with her yarn before, but Owl of Athena Fiber Arts, who's an Australian hand dyer, um, she recently did a um, mystery birthday colorway. So if you've ordered it and it hasn't arrived, just tune off. Nothing exciting is happening after this. I'm just being weird. Um, I'm being really excited about yarn. Um, so if you have ordered it and you haven't received it, look away because I'm going to show it. But um, when I, and so I, I'm not normally, you know me, I'm not a mystery surprise person. I don't like surprises. I don't like mystery knit alongs. Like hope you're all having fun with Stephen West, but I will, I mean, never say never, but I don't think I will ever actually do a mystery knit along as a mystery. Like I would there are a couple of his patterns from the mystery knit along that I like and would make, but not as a surprise. I don't like surprises. And even like I bought a yarn advent calendar last year, I wouldn't get one every year because the anxiety of not really knowing what I'm getting um, is a little too much for me. So, but when I ordered the mystery birthday skein, I also ordered another skein just who doesn't want more yarn of her sock yarn so I just wanted to show you the difference in these two yarn bases because it just made me really like I just got really excited so these are both um an 80 20 blend so it's um 80 percent superwash merino 20 percent nylon but one is her um she calls her her Aussie like it's her it's her Delphi sock which I think is actually Delphi, but my um, auntie and uncle used to have a dog and we pronounced it Delphi. So I always call it Delphi for sweet Delphi dog. Um, so it's her Delphi sock base, which is 80% Aussie superwash merino, 20% nylon. And then the mystery birthday skein, which you're seeing now. So like I gave you a spoiler alert, um, is her Romulus sock, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, not Australian. This one is more the standard super high twist 80-20 that you get from lots of hand dyers that I guess they, I'm, I'm pretty sure is import from the US. I think it's like a um, Peruvian merino. So I was talking to someone on Instagram about this the other day. Um, and then this one is the Aussie superwash merino, which from feeling it, I think I know where they've sourced this from but I'm not hundred percent sure. So I'm not going to say in case I'm wrong, but, um, I'm pretty sure I know where I source this, where they source this from. Um, just from the look and feel of it and yarns I've used before. Anyway, so this colorway is called Albedine. And then this is the birthday colorway that came with a little red mini, which is super cute. But anyway, these are the same, it's the same yarn content. Um, so 80, 20, but look at the difference in the like drape. And like, even if you look closer, this one that is the non-Australian one is just so much more like silky and super drapey. And it feels like, I, and I do think that when I work with this base, cause I think actually that um, Three Mums yarn is the same yarn base. It's like almost ropey, like it doesn't feel stretchy it doesn't feel like woolly it's very soft very sleek very slick and as you can see look if I move this down a bit you can actually see like super drapey this one which is the Aussie Merino is like much browner. it's got more air in it it's like squishy it's bouncy it's not shiny it's it is a much more matte yarn it's still a pretty tightly like a pretty tight twist on that yarn but it's just so much more like solid like I'm holding that up it's not this isn't I mean you could knit it at a loose gauge and make it drapey but it's just like this feels more like wool it still has 20% nylon in it but it just feels like much closer to wool if I had my preference this would definitely be my preference I mean I will probably, when I knit these up, just knit like a stockinette sock or like a socks on a plane kind of sock out of this. This, I want to knit like something textured, like a, I think maybe like the blueberry waffle socks 
or um, I've knit before the Easy Feet socks by Jessica Gore which is a really nice like squishy textured sock like this. It's just like got so much air in it. It's just so much more squishy. But yeah, I just can't get over the fact these are both an 80-20, but clearly the merino is just processed differently and it's spun differently. Um, maybe and they're both superwash as well. It's not like this is like a non-superwash yarn. It's still a superwash merino, but just the difference in the drape and like the look of the yarn. I just can't get over it. And also I can't get over how similar, like not similar these colors are, but they're both like a cool purple base, which I'm sure um, Laura, because I had said on Instagram that I don't really like surprises. Um, and she's like, well, I hope you like the yarn. Um, and she probably had a giggle when she packaged up my order because they are like, this is definitely, they're both like that cool purple base, this with more of a pink through it. And this with the red that goes then with the beautiful red mini. Um, I'm sure, I hope Laura had a laugh when she saw that. But um, can't get over the difference between these two 80-20 blends. Um, so that's probably enough of me. I'm, I've, I've been talking for a long time today. Um, but I just, there was no one else apart from you guys that I knew would just be like fascinated. Like I could, I've just been doing this. I've been coming home from work every day and just like looking at how like, it's the same but it's not the same like wool is amazing like in the there are so many ways to like oh i could just talk about that all day but you've yeah, been looking at this so much just the difference um so yeah which of these two would you rather work with the more sleek drapey one or the more like airy woolly one leave it in the comments below um, also, if this is just absolutely fascinating to you, also leave it in the comments below. I hope it is. Um, otherwise, you probably switched off this video already because you're like, why is this woman talking about yarn so much? But I will continue to stare at this yarn by myself once I switch off the video. So let me know in the comments below what you're working on, what's coming up. Do you have any upcoming plans for the new season? Um, Southern Hemisphere friends, what summer tops are you looking to work on? Northern Hemisphere friends, are you ready for the cold, cozy weather? Wow, those people are talking really loud. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments below what's coming up. What have you got that you want to cast on next? What yarn do you want to buy? Are you as fascinated as I am by those, the difference in those two merino yarns? Um, let me know. I hope you're keeping safe and well. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It's been a pleasure and I will see you in the next episode. Bye guys.